Listen, this guy was an absolute dog. I, I had to see him twice a year, and I still talk about him because my neck's so fucked up. <laughs> and I, and I think once a week I'm in the studio. Like I think this was Vernon Davis. I can't turn my head all the way to the left, and I think it's Vernon Davis. And so we don't get to see each other a lot, but we had some battles, man. And one of my favorite players to play against. We go at each other's throats, but we were always respectful of each other. And I just got so much respect for you, bro. It's great to see you. Vernon Davis is joining us in the Toyota studio. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. It's good good to be here. Good to see you, you guys. Um, it's, it's great. Uh, 49ers are in the Super Bowl, so that's a, that's a plus for me. Yeah. But uh, everything's going well. Dude, we had – I just want to talk about the old NFC West. I mean, it's uh, – again, there's great teams in there. But back when we played, bro – Y'all's group was so physical, and Seattle was so physical. We had the defensive front, but, like, I don't want to leave Arizona out. But those games were like dogfights, bro. What are your memories of the NFC West when, we, when your teams were really good and how physical it was? Um, yeah, I mean, that was oh, some good days, man, very physical. That's when, um, that's when guys were really bringing at me, Most, both, both – up front defensively for you guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the secondary. But it was it was it's something to remember. It's, the game's not the same anymore. No, it's changed a little bit. It, it's changed. It's changed. And uh, but it was those were some good times, memories I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Playing against guys like you and just holding on to that experience, man. Because there's no greater experience than experience I had playing on Sundays and games against you guys. It was incredible, yeah. man. And I miss the old candlestick. I don't know if you've been to the new stadium a bunch. Levi's, have you been to Levi's a bunch? Oh, Levi's, uh, not a bunch. Um, well, I played in it quite a, at the end. Yeah, you played yeah, it at the end. Played it at the end, but not not as much as Candlestick. Because I miss that old yeah. stadium. Oh, Candlestick was amazing. Like Just, it was, it was definitely like oh. about to fall down. Yeah. But I, I miss those old stadiums, yeah. like the vibe. You know, it's great to go to Seattle, and it's super live and it's state of the art. But the the old stadiums were my favorite. Um, Jim Harbaugh was a big part of that run. And I can remember, and I point this out, when he got hired, the first year when he came in, it was a lockout year, wasn't it? It was a lockout year, yeah. And y'all found a way to turn that team around with Alex Smith as quarterback, who I think is a really good quarterback, doesn't get enough credit, but he's certainly not like a Mahomes-type guy. 13-3 and three that first year. Mm-hmm. So Jim Harbaugh walks in the door. You got old vets and young guys and new people, new pieces. What was the first impression of him? Was there any like, damn, this guy's different? I don't know if he's gonna stick. Yeah, no, I knew right away that he was he was gonna be around for a while because of his his energy and enthusiasm. I mean, he the, what he was talking about. He was talking about plays and how he was gonna design, design them for the tight ends, the, the the wide receivers, and he he felt like he was a he didn't feel like a coach. He felt like a a teammate. Yeah. He felt like a teammate that was calling the shots. And I knew it was something special about him. And he was he had this unique ability to be able to get guys to rally behind him. I mean, one day he came out and he was suited from head to toe. Cleats, helmet, no. shoulder pads, yeah. <laughs> he was he was suited. And he went out and he was with the he, he was with the, the the number two offense, right? <laughs> that, Harbaugh ran with the twos. He ran with the twos. I like that. He ran with the twos, the number two offense, and he was out there just slinging, man. It was it was crazy. Could he still throw it? Yeah. He was throwing. <laughs> he did pretty good. It was it was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. I was like, this guy's this guy's hilarious, man. <laughs> what do you think? Helmet on, helmet on, full helmet, pads. everything, full pads, man. <laughs> but he's also he's like, and I'm because I, I love the hire in LA. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great hire, that, and I think they're gonna be super happy with him because I said it. I played him twice a year, yeah. but he's different. Like. Is he hard to relate to, or is that something for the people outside? Like, when he connects with his guys, you know, I'm sure he's different than the guy you see in an interview. Yeah, he's different than the guy you see in, a, in an interview. Yeah, he's totally different. I mean, this guy, he's, he's a he's, – he's a play. He played. He played yeah. football. So, yeah. he's – the energy and the vibe that you get from him is totally different than any other coach. But he's totally – when he's in that locker room, he's all about football. He's football to the T, man. Yeah, I'm psyched to see him coaching again, man. And I think the guys won at every level – He's up there with anybody. I mean, very few guys can win in college and win in the pros, so I'm excited to see him coach again. What do you think about the game this week? Do you still follow these guys a lot? Yeah, I follow these guys. I think this is going to be a, it's going to be a tough game for both teams, offensively, defensively, because we, we have two good teams going head-to-head. I mean, Brock Purdy is Brock Purdy. Uh, but he's uh, and he's taking a lot of he's getting a lot of criticism right now. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is. I mean, we know what he's going to come out and do. Yeah. But 
this game can go any way. You just never know. We have yeah. to be prepared for the unexpected. So we'll see. Yeah, no question. I think it's going to be a tight game, and I think both teams are going to want to run the ball, right? Because I think they both can. You got a score prediction? Uh, I think it's going to be really close, man. It's going to be one of those. We might be looking at an overtime game. Okay. I go overtime. High scoring or low scoring? You know, I like to bet the totals here, Vernon. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Okay. Yeah. Like a 23-20 type I, I think it's going to be a low-scoring okay. game, man. It is. All right. So tell me about what you're doing since football, man, because every time I see you, you're doing something else really cool that has nothing to do with football, and you've always been that guy that had other interests. Yeah. Absolute dog on the field, but you had other interests off the field, like movies. Did I hear Morgan Freeman? Oh, well, I have a – well – we do. I do have a movie that's hot, popular on Hulu right now with yeah. Morgan Freeman. It's called The Ritual Killer. I played a serial killer with Morgan Freeman. Oh, that figures. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that I just that did fucking a, figures. I just did a, just did a movie with uh, Steven Spielberg and his daughter. No way. Oh, I was starring that one with uh, Michelle Dockery. No way. It's uh, going to be pretty cool. But the, but the coolest experience I have is working with a group called Smirnoff. Diageo is the parent company. Yeah, yeah. They've uh, they've been truly amazing. I mean, like even some of the connections that they've given me with the um, with my life after football. Yeah, it's been awesome. But Smirnoff Smash is one of their most innovative products that they've been working on. You know, innovation occurs when when you understand the world and you figure out what people want. Yeah. They've done that so many times. Um, this Smirnoff Vodka Smash has 100 calories. That's good which for is us. Great. Right. It takes. It. Th this is good, man, because. It takes me 10 minutes to burn 100 calories, and I can burn these calories off quick. quick. Yeah, you quick. To have a Smirnoff smash, go for a quick run. <laughs> quick, but we also have a pickle bowl competition with uh, Kay Adams as my partner. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kay. Yeah, 2.30 p.m. on yeah. Saturday. Okay. What, it's going to be awesome, man. Pickle bowl. Pickle bowl. Pickle bowl. Nice. Pickle bowl. Pickle bowl. Got to get bowl. Yeah. Pickle bowl, yeah. yeah. Pickle bowl. yeah. <laughs> we got we to gotta sample some of that Smirnoff smash. Yeah, we definitely Because uh, Because Nate, Nate loves trying new drinks. <laughs> I get a case of that Smirnoff smash yes, right here. Yes, a case. <laughs> and I want to cancel all my afternoon interviews because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be toasted. I, um, I have I have one question. I wanna I wanna ask you like emotionally, being on a team and getting traded at the deadline, but then ending up on a Super Bowl team. Like how does that how does that work for you like emotionally th during the season, knowing you're about to get or if you knew or not that you were about to get traded during the deadline, but get to a new team, and then end up winning the Super Bowl. But well, that happened to me. No, that's what I'm saying. Denver Broncos, Super Bowl 50, I was – But when was, you got traded, how I just finished feeling? playing the Saint Louis, against the St. Louis Rams. What year was that? That was 2015. Yeah, I was all hurt, so I wouldn't even like. Yeah, thank you. I thank thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you You're did my welcome. job a lot. Be, like, You're welcome, bro. Man, I was gimping. Man, I was happy. It's happiest day <laughs> ever, man. God, this guy, this guy was crazy, man. This go guy was so play. hard, dude. He's probably the hardest defender I ever had to go against. <laughs> like this guy and Jared Allen, but the guys that they were tough, man. They they didn't make they, those guys are awesome. But anyway, getting traded, going going into the office that morning, I knew something was up. There was I knew something. I just felt the tension. And I go in and then <clears throat> Trent Balk at the time, general manager, said, We're gonna we're gonna trade you. And I'm like getting emotional because I'm like, I was with this team for ten years and now you're gonna send me off. But I understood it was a business yep. and it was bittersweet. So I left, went to Denver, bada bing, bada boom, ended up winning Super Bowl fifty. That was an incredible game, too. It was an incredible game. <laughs> it was a fun team to probably be on with Peyton at the end and that sort of thing. I hear he's a great teammate. Oh, Peyton's awesome. When Funny I first got there, I walked in. I, he was calling me as I was walking in. He's like, oh, Vern, I, I, come in, Vern. I, I, come in. Come see me when you get in the office, Vern. I, I got one something for you, guys. I think you can play Peyton in a biopic. <laughs> hey, I can't wait to watch your movies, bro. I'm just a big fan of Vernon Davis. Great dude. For a Maryland Terrapin. I mean, I don't like a lot of those guys, but this dude, he's awesome. So uh, thanks for coming by, and great seeing you, man. Thank you. Congrats Thank on you. all the success. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah.